You're listening to the Quad Cities number one in music station. This is B100. Hey, what's up? It's Connor Kenny. And one of the best things uh, in life that brings people together, uh, that really just makes everyone happy, I feel like is food. And joining me in studio is the one, the only Chef Keys. Chef Keys, <laughs> how you doing, girl? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for having me, Connor. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So, you know, if I was to tell anyone, when people ask me, what would you do besides radio? Cooking would be it. Really? I love to cook. Oh, I love, man. love, love to cook. I make homemade pasta, make homemade pizza. I'm Irish as hell, but I make <laughs> a lot of Italian food. That is for sure. Uh, but you are a chef here in the Quad Cities. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us what you do here in the QCA. So currently, I am a content creator. Some people call me a social media influencer. Yeah. I, I don't know. I volunteer. But I, you know, I started doing um, dinners in my home. Yeah. and creating conversations and having those hard conversations literally at my dinner table meeting so many influential people or regular joe schmo people like myself in the quad cities well i wouldn't consider you regular joe schmo by any I, means I do. your personality is bubbly it is just <laughs> infectious and it's so incredible uh but you're not from the quad cities no, originally sorry. you are born and raised in new york i am born and raised and from new york from queens yeah you know um and i love home but yeah. I am so happy how the Quad Cities in the Midwest has, you know, just come and just welcomed me. So I, I appreciate it. This is my second home now. So Queens is uh, Queens, New York is your mm -hmm. is your hometown. Uh, tell us how you got from Queens to the Quad Cities. Well, I used to be in law enforcement nice. and I worked at the prison uh, up in can't say, but sure, in, yeah. in Illinois. Yeah, and from there. You know, life happened. I had to make a change and I decided like, you know what, let me pursue food, you mm -hmm. know, full fledged, like balls to the wall. And here I am. Yeah. So wh who who was the person that inspired you to cook? Because I feel like it's it's more of a person mm -hmm. than, it, than it is you just like, you know, picking up a hobby. It, you know, I started cooking, honestly, when I was a teen. Yeah. It was my way to deal with a lot of trauma that okay. I had growing up, and it was my way to escape. So I found a positive uh, route, alternative to doing other things. And my great-grandmother, that's so cliche. Yeah. Everyone said, oh, my grandma taught me. But seriously, I woke up one morning smelling butter, bacon, and biscuits. Like, wow. those three things. Yeah. And ever since then, you know, that's when I fell in love with food. What was the best dish you always like to make with your great grandmother? Uh -huh. Biscuits. Biscuits. Always biscuits. biscuits. Yeah. I tried to make biscuits one time from some sort of video that was going around, like on TikTok or Poppy something like that. Sets. It turned out, it turned out <laughs> not as good as what they looked on social really? media. I always feel like, did you guys just buy some like uh, Pillsbury Doughboy? I can just swap it out at the you end. No, not to shade Pillsbury because I understand some yeah. people have it a little difficult, but you know, it, biscuits are just their love. How could you not love something that's Latin and butter yeah. and baked delicious goodness? Like, yeah. come on. See, my inspiration, you know, talking and, and doing radio came from a passion I picked up uh, towards the end of high school. But uh, back when I was a kid, my dad and my mom owned a bar in Clinton, and uh -huh. we used to sling pizzas. I, I was back there like six, seven years old, helping my, my siblings cook pizzas and some of the other kitchen staff that was there. So that's where my inspiration came from, was just from like helping out, but it was fun to cook with other people. So you're like an Irish kid cooking pizza. Yeah. That's so cool. You're right. So, but it, it always inspired me to just kind of keep that extra little skill because mm -hmm. food, you know, just obviously, like I said before, brings people together. It does. And the main thing that you're doing right now here in the Quad Cities is, is private chefing, right? Yeah. And how is that going? <laughs> it's going okay. Um, believe it or not, there are a lot more people who want to share a meal with someone and have it feel very homey. Yeah. They don't want to go out to a restaurant. And I'm not saying restaurants are bad because, trust me, I love to go out to eat because I tired of cooking all the time for right. myself. Yeah. But sometimes you want that feeling, that home-cooked meal where you're sitting around friends, family, or other like-minded individuals or people that you don't think you would have anything in common with. Yeah. And you learn something. So that is the premise of what I do. I want to learn something from you. I want to get to know you. Who are you? And I want to be able to share who I am with you, you know, unapologetically. Me. Yeah. Black, a woman, a, you know, a creative person, someone who's very passionate about life and people and you know, human stuff. You know, I'm flawed like anyone else. Sure. But that's, that's the beauty of being human, right? True. But I own it. 
I don't sit there and try to skirt around it or anything like that. If you ask me something, you know, it, it is what it is. What's some of the most interesting conversations you've had as, as private <laughs> chef? I mean, like, what's one that's, you know, you're like, hey, uh, this one definitely <laughs> sticks out big time. And hopefully it's not one where someone goes, hey, Chef Keys, this sucks. <laughs> no, uh, fortunate. And I ask people all the time, hey, you know, how was it? Do you like it? Do you enjoy it? What are some things that I could do to be better? How could your meal or your experience have been better? And I've gotten honest answers like, well, yeah. you could have done this or we could have had this. And they're like, but overall, like I give it a great review. Eight out of 10, nine out of 10, you know, no one's perfect. So I don't accept 10 out of 10. No. <laughs> but like, I want someone to be honest and I look at them like, how can I be better? But the most interesting conversation is always about color. It's always about how I got here. It's, really? Yeah. It's always about what is my opinion of the Quad Cities about how african-american people or other people of color are represented here and you know I, I give my honest feedback sure and i'm like well to be honest yeah the quad cities even though it's very diverse as opposed to other cities in the midwest you know let's exclude them right yeah, yeah. but um it needs more representation sure. more color more ethnicities and you know it's it's still growing yeah absolutely and, and i want to be a part of that change yeah and you know you do a lot in the community and we're going to talk about that here in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a hot second i want to go back to the private chefing just real, real okay. fast do you encourage people after you get done you know doing the cooking and all that stuff i mean i know it's probably bad for business but do you encourage <laughs> them like hey stop hiring me and just do this at home for yourself like, you know what i mean I, I do you encourage them to, to just take a step back and be like hey no. you can whip up uh, you know you know the ham and cheese sandwiches it's not that damn hard <laughs> well honestly so i don't do it when i go out but i do have a segment mondays and wednesdays on channel six kwqc yeah. where i showcase certain things that i want to cook and i give you the recipes where you can log on to kwqc.com and you can see what i'm making you can see what i'm doing myself and morgan we're actually we have open conversations about food and how you can do this at home with whatever it is is available to you. Yeah, and you and I met uh, on Morgan's show, 11 yes. o'clock, KWQC, and I believe it was during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. And you were doing some some incredible segments on that, which of course <laughs> is gonna segue into what you do for the community and talking right. about what you do. So uh, what are the, some of the primary focuses that you do here in the Quad Cities as a way to help out the community? I believe in youth enrichment. Yeah. I believe and helping the underserved. And when I say the underserved, it can be seniors, children, people who have a forensic background. What I mean is people, uh, uh, convicted felons or people who are family members of convicted felons. I am passionate about veterans. I'm passionate about people who are in law enforcement, first responders, because mm -hmm. that was my career path previously. Right. Um, and my husband. So I have a lot of uh, demographics of people yeah. that I support. Right. So I try to be there fully, whatever I'm doing and right. give my all. Yeah. And you know, and it's interesting when you are talking about color, when people ask you like, Oh, what's it like, you know, for people of color here in the quad cities, mm -hmm. you know, you come from Queens, you come <laughs> to the quad cities all the way from New York and all this stuff. And you know, you are a black woman mm -hmm. and you are obviously, you know, you're here to support uh, the black community, the African American community. But the thing is, is that you help every type of person that, that's possible. Color isn't no. necessarily in your wheelhouse. No, I'm not one of those people who just want to just be the black person. I'm the black, the spokesperson for the black caucus. That's that's not what I'm about. Yeah, I am honestly about bridging gaps and trying to understand each other, because when you understand someone, you can act I don't want to say properly, but you can have a, a better understanding. You know where they're coming from. Yeah. Try to get someone's intentions. Sure. Before just flying off the handle. Right. So that's where the conversation comes in. Yeah. And like you said before, food is something that helps bridge those gaps. Yeah. It brings down the shoulders. It, you know, takes off the armor. People are more willing to listen to other perspectives or vantage points over a full stomach. Right. So why not have these hard conversations over my table? Yeah. With someone who's unbiased and willing to facilitate that. Yeah. 
You know, it's interesting when people eat. I feel like the only time when people get angry when they eat <laughs> is when the food <laughs> isn't good. It's bad. Right. I mean, you could be talking about <laughs> politics. You could be talking about race. You could be talking about religion. It all stops. It all stops because it's hard to be upset when you got a really good <laughs> dish in front of your face. Yes. And it's easier, I feel like, to have those conversations mm -hmm. with different people with different background. Um, and yeah, definitely food bridges that gap. Uh, and you obviously are doing everything you can That's to help awesome. out to help out here in the community. What else you got going on in life besides you know being on with Morgan on KDQC, <laughs> uh, besides serving youth, besides un serving underprivileged, besides you know seniors, veterans, law enforcement, everyone. Besides that, what else you got going on? Ah, oh, I'm trying to travel. Yeah, I want to be uh, another version of Bourdain. Okay, like I have this. Un, this insatiable quest or for life yeah. and just to go out and just I want to experience things right I want to have people around me who want to do that and if I could find a way to document that to go and travel and meet people to talk to learn how to cook and be a, completely immerse myself yeah. in their culture. Absolutely. I want to do that. And you know, and I was getting some Anthony Bourdain vibes from you big time <laughs> because I mean, the man, God rest his soul, yes. uh, traveled. He was always encouragement of, you know, sit down, order the fancy steak, order the high end glass of wine, order the crappy wine, you know, just try it all yes. because everything has something unique about it. And you know, the great thing about chefs, I, and it doesn't matter what gender, what race, whatever, Every person brings their own style of cooking Absolutely. to the table, mm -hmm. which is incredible. And I feel like, you know, if you were to cook a meal and, you know, no one knew anything about you, it wouldn't matter if they knew anything about you. Because nope. as long as the food is good, yep. that's the part that matters. <laughs> and, you know, and I feel like every single chef has has their different different dishes that they mm -hmm. are experts at. What is your your culinary expertise like what's what's the style of food i curate world culinary or world fusion cuisine okay which Let's try means that. you know like when people pay a lot of money you create these sure. <laughs> crazy things see in my it really, in my brain in my brain it's like someone pulling out the tweezers like let me let me plate this real nicely on a scallop or something like that you yes, know that's part of it but it's i don't subscribe to one thought yeah so in my food i don't subscribe to one genre or one cuisine there yeah. are certain things so i like to cherry pick yeah if i want to if, if i want to call it a mousse bouche or whatever that's like french like appetizer or whatever yeah or if i want to just call it an appetizer or i want to create this and put this and this together because the flavor profiles are great I don't want to be constricted to just one thing. I want right. to learn multiple disciplines and see where this thing can complement that. Yeah. So that's what I do in my home, with in other people's homes or wherever, even yeah. my cooking classes with the girls. Yeah. The thing that, that irritates me the most, I feel like when it comes to, I don't want to say Quad Cities because it's Midwest. Midwest is very meat and potatoes. Yeah. It's, it's the pot roast with the yeah. carrots and the, and there's nothing the, wrong the, with that. Unless, pork tenderloin. Yes. Unless you ask my mom, she despises, <laughs> despises pot roast. She's like, that's all I had as I can. <laughs> but <laughs> is it, is it difficult walking in as a private chef? Um, because do they request what they want? No, you don't have no choice. No, no. you don't have a choice as the chef or you don't have a, a choice as, as the diner. As my guests, I don't have, they're not, they're not patrons. Yeah. So when you come to my house or previously when you used to come to my house, um, you, it's a surprise. We sit down, we have a conversation. I get a feel for you. If you are that starch, like meat and potatoes, I don't like sure. anything else, then I'm going to have to catered to that right but yeah if you tell me the keywords like you know we're open we like this we've traveled we are really looking for this then that gives me room to be creative absolutely and allow me to show you how what i think about food or what i want to prepare mm -hmm. and it's awesome yeah it is and you know there are a lot of people here in the quad cities who are looking for that right who let's say i'm just gonna throw like dear people or uh, another one of the big three that come here and they sure. travel all around. Yeah, they want to experience the things that they've experienced in Argentina, but they don't have it here. Right, or especially yeah, I mean yeah, people come from all over the U.S., all mm -hmm. over the world to work for these huge factories, big yeah. big businesses that are here in the QCA um, that want a taste of even of home. Yep, you know, and they probably look to you for that. Mm -hmm. Like you know, I'm from I'm from Texas. Yep. And, you know, they and they want or like you know Tex Mex maybe, but they want that mm -hmm. that style of of what they miss at 
at home that they can't get here in the Quad Cities. I actually, that's kind of how it started. A woman asked me to make shrimp and grits for her husband. Oh. I posted a picture on Quad City Food Lovers, and she's like, oh, my God, my husband, there's no place that serves shrimp and grits here. I said, like, okay, well, I got it for you. Sign me up. So she <laughs> came over. I showed her my refrigerator. She handed me 300 bucks and was just like, I trust you. Do your thing. I went, I dropped food off at her house, like cans of food, enough literally to feed her, her husband, and their kids. And she just wrote a glowing review. That's awesome. And then it just, you know, trickled. And I had another lady come over and she's like, can we eat in your house? And I'm like, what? Yeah. It's just like, well, my husband and I love bed and breakfasts, so it's the same thing. All right. So I'm like, okay. Deal. Right. Yeah. I had nothing in my house, I promise you. My husband and I moved from a one-bedroom um, apartment in New York City. It was a large bedroom, but, you know, yeah. to a five-bedroom house here in the Quad City. So you can imagine. Right. Empty. Yeah. And You're all, like, I got I all these rooms to fill. <laughs> I got nothing to fill it nothing with. Nothing to fill it <laughs> So I just had a dining room. The first thing I bought when I got here, because I always wanted to live in a historic home, I bought a dining room table okay. that seats eight. Wow. And I had China from New York, you know, so I just set it out. And I said, well, listen. I don't have much. I just moved in. And she was like, that's fine. They stayed for four hours. Wow. They ate dinner. We talked. I got to know them. And to this day, we still text each other. And she's just like, you've grown so much. And I'm like, well, you started that. Yeah, and absolutely. thank you. Yeah, she is the, the reason why. She's an OG. She's an OG. I love that. <laughs> Uh, joining me in case you're just tuning in right now is Chef Keys. Yes. Uh, she, her real name is Casey Ross. Yep. Uh, where does Chef Keys from come from? Chef Keys come. That's my nickname. Gotcha. So, Keys. Keys is my nickname. Yeah. Um, a friend of mine gave it to me. Well, and I hate the nickname Kiki, but only one person. For sure. L is the only person who yeah. calls me Kiki and is allowed to. Okay, real quick, real <laughs> quick, funny about Kiki. Um, when my daughter Kaylin was born, uh -huh. I, for some reason that song by Drake where he's like Kiki, do, do you, you love me? I called her Kiki for six months because <laughs> it just was stuck in my head. <laughs> for the first uh, loop, I was like Kiki. Her uh, name's Kaylin. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, but. I, like I said, we met we met back at KWQC uh -huh. uh, during Morgan's show at 11 o'clock. And after I met you, uh, you with your, like I said, infectious, bubbly personality. Really? Yeah. You inspired me. So for a long time, uh, there's been a couple of dishes that I've been wanting to make. Okay. Uh, one has been burrito tacos. Uh, okay. So I made those. Um, and I, I come out. Oh, where, where delicious. I know, right? I ate them all. <laughs> All the constant, ate, ate them all. <laughs> um, but also, one of my favorite places to visit, and this kind of goes back to... Um, you know, with the Midwest, very meat and potatoes. Hard to find people that want to branch out to do stuff. Mm. My favorite restaurant in the Quad Cities, and they're not paying me to say this by any means, okay. is Tasty Ethiopia <gasps> in downtown. Gannette is nice. She is the best. Gannette is amazing. Yeah. Her and her husband, let me tell you something, they are so inspiring. Yes, they the, are. The fact that they worked for the, for the government, yeah. retired, and now she has this restaurant, and she is like, I want to impart my culture, her Ethiopian culture, to the Quad Cities. I 100%, yeah. I 100% be am behind that. Yeah, and I've been so so nervous to create a dish that's an Ethiopian dish. Uh, and I wanted to create Dorawa, which is basically chicken with, a, with the, the seasonings and all that uh -huh. stuff that you would find in Ethiopia. And just to encourage anyone that really, because I, and, and I know you encourage people too, yes. to branch out of, yes. of cooking, to start cooking. And you don't have to be an expert nope. chef to look at it. There's so many recipes online. Of course, support your local chefs and mm -hmm. your local restaurants, but even start to make things at home because I feel like that's going to start branching some of those gaps together. Believe it or not, I feel that learning how to cook other cultures or being interested in cooking other cultures um, raises the level of tolerance yeah. for people and people like what are you talking about I said think about it if you are taking the time to really explore someone else's ethnic background and what they eat how they live what are the some of the things that they do for a routine how does that not make you more tolerant of other people right more understanding of some of the hurdles that they go through it, like it just it it coincides right. I feel yeah so learn how to eat what they eat and then you can learn where they come from and learn why they do some of the things that they do. Absolutely. And the first time we ever went to Tasty Ethiopia, which was kind of, it's weird to be submersed into a culture mm -hmm. in, in, a, in the Quad Cities. Like, how do I feel like I'm going so far away and I'm still just here at home? Right. Uh, we were introduced uh, 
one of my wife's best friends, Krista, went into the Peace Corps into Ethiopia. Wow, and she came cool. back and she's like, oh, you guys have an Ethiopian restaurant. And we didn't go there just to eat. Uh -huh. Oh, no, she explained the whole nine yards. Injera, everything? Yeah, the, injera and everything like that. And just how Ethiopians eat and how just that different culture eats. And there's so many different cultures around the world. And there's so many restaurants in the Quad Cities and surrounding area that allow you to be submerged into that culture. So mm -hmm. there's plenty of places to do that at. And even if it's a chef at a restaurant, a private chef like Chef Keys, <laughs> they'll help you get there, baby. They'll get you there. You have to be willing yes. to want to get there. That's another part, like um, changing the mindset and start small like all right maybe you might not like spicy food sure try to go on google or wherever and instead of googling uh accidents or high school fights why don't you yeah. try and google right you know what non-spicy ethiopian dishes yeah or something yeah. before i met ellie she wouldn't eat uh, she was she didn't like eating pepperonis too much on pizza because she thought pepperonis were spicy really now she'll throw jalapenos like on tacos Look and stuff that. i'm like girl Look at you, you got it you're there <laughs> ready to go uh chef keys you are uh of course doing awesome work uh what's the next step in life here in the quad cities i don't know i'm trying to get a brick and mortar yeah or something together you deserve I, it i want to have a place where like-minded people can come and join and commune and not have to worry about the judgment or the eyes of the outside world yeah i want it to be private i want it to be a safe space so that's one thing and i want to i want to continue to help the underserved people who deal with food insecurity that's something that i want to do most most definitely you know and another thing <laughs> i want to travel more yeah i want to do my bourdainish yeah you know I'm like i just those are my top three though oh uh, where's the place you want to visit you the most italy italy i need to get to italy i i don't know why i just have to be there i yeah. need to be in the amalfi coast and sorrento i need to go to florence or tuscany and see the rolling hills like yeah. i love italian food traditional Italian food. Yeah, I mean, I feel like me making pasta at home does no justice to what they do in Italia by any means. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, here's my Midwest uh, version of pasta that I rolled out on my KitchenAid. Uh, but you know what? It's better than nothing. Absolutely. Trust me. When you have fresh pasta and you have make a fresh sauce, yeah, it goes a long way. Like when I made the B100 sauce, the yeah. vodka sauce, it was fire. My husband's like, yo, this is it. I'm like, I know, right? Yeah, you made uh, the vodka penne sauce with a B100 approved vodka tell us how that went uh well there were a lot of uh drunk people sure i may i may have brought a bottle over jake and jake and i uh, may have been sucking some down and may have poured some glasses uh behind the scenes that day but yes yeah tell us the real quick uh how to make a vodka penne sauce so you start with a quarter cup of vodka guys this is not for you to get lit it is literally <laughs> it is literally just to add a little bit of flavor and i think there's something in the vodka that makes the tomatoes less acidic yeah and it just rounds it out and then you have to get a really good heavy cream that's going to give you that creaminess that's going to give you that nice light red color that you're looking for and herbs herbs are your best friend start with the bottom you want your carrots you want your onions get your mirepoix cook those down get a nice nice tomato yeah and i feel like if you make soup at home uh, and you just heard Chef Key say mirepoix. It is literally celery, carrots, and onions. Oh, sorry. The yeah. foundation <laughs> to soups. Mm -hmm. Everyone makes soups here in the Quad Cities, especially in the wintertime. Yep. But it's the foundation of soups, but it's a foundation to a lot of dishes. Mm -hmm. um, if you like Cajun style, your holy trinity and bell peppers, Pepper, celery, celery, and, and onion. onion, you're just swapping out the carrots for, mm -hmm. for peppers. Chef Keys is like, Connor, you know. Get into it. I okay. got it, baby. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, really though, I, cooking brings people together and even having conversations about cooking, it's my favorite conversation to have. I always encourage our friends to cook more. A lot of my buddies uh, bought like Traegers and stuff like that and they started oh, okay. smoking stuff and I'm like, that's guys, the Midwest thing. that's such a Midwest thing. And, and you know what? Smoked food is great and I, I love it. It does come out delicious if mm -hmm. you do it right. But you know what? To branch out more besides smoking and crock pot cooking to me is boring. It's so and boring. I, it doesn't make me feel good throwing something in a crock pot and then walking away. I and just Set I'm sure just it. like you, you gotta be tentative with it. You gotta you know get the pans out. Feel like you're flipping. <laughs> 
all the things in the air, doing everything like that. It's like Cirque du Soleil in the kitchen. Right, exactly. But it really isn't that. It's it, when, not. when you're there, cooking is fun. It's got to be fun. You know, a cooking will allow you that instant gratification. Yeah. You know how some people need that? Yep. Cooking can do that for you because you start from finish and you have right there, you have your finished product. You feel pride. You feel a higher sense of self-worth. And this is one of the things that I'm teaching the students at Washington Junior High School. Yeah. And hopefully I'll be moving on to Edison um, too on the Illinois side. And I have a couple projects that are brewing You're here. You're busy, <laughs> busy. Brewing here on the Iowa side. Like I just, I think cooking is the lost art. I mean, it's the only art form that you can utilize all of your five senses and to really grasp what's going on. So I think students will really benefit from that. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you this. What are the three main ingredients? Okay. And I'm not talking about food, food, but what are the main three ingredients uh, when it comes to cooking? Like when it comes to actually like doing the art of cooking? I'll give you, I'll give you mine. Okay. Be happy. Okay. Seasoning your food. Hello. That part. Get into it. <laughs> and try and actually plate. Okay. That's those are my three things. Yes. I'm working on plating right now because my plating is terrible. <laughs> Me too. It's okay. It's a con it's a constant work. Yeah. Um so I would say creativity. Okay. You have to have an open mind. So creativity is one. Um seasoning every Everything. Uh, the most, I, you're going to agree with me. Reason, uh, yes, I'm glad you said seasoning also. Everyone stop on, under seasoning your food, please. Listen, I'm tired of seeing these bland chicken breasts. Right. On, you know, the TikToks and the I'm, Instagram reels. And, and I'm tired of seeing salmon and everything. And I'm tired of hearing people say salmon. Like, that's another little pet peeve, food pet peeve of mine. Someone says salmon? There's a lot of people who pronounce that L in that word, honey. Oh, and goodness. it is cringy. No, thank you. <laughs> so that's my two and three share. Absolutely share. Sharing. Like, sharing is a big thing for me. Like, my girlfriend, Elena, uh, when I first started, I, she was literally my test dummy. Her and my husband sitting there like, mm, mm, mm. But, you know, she's busy now, so she can't come over as much. Boo. Right? <laughs> Boo, Elena. Come on, Elena. What you doing, girl? <laughs> so, coming over and sharing and going to other people's house, like, I have neighbors, and I would call it Amazon Drops, right? Okay. So, I would drop food or groceries, and I would have, like, boxes of stuff and give it to them and they're like what is this i don't know make something with it right and then they would send me pictures of the food that they make so yeah. i took that thought and you know partnered with be nourished there's so much stuff that i'm doing, doing all right? the things all the things <laughs> <laughs> yes like so i partnered with be nourished which is a food pantry here in um iowa and they're part of vine ministry and the davenport community um food pantry here yeah yep so it's once a month food drop that service 36 families. Okay. And each family is about five to eight people. So, yep. you know, it's like feeding a lot of people. I give recipes within the box. So I, I myself, and then it's a student run pantry. So we pick the things and then I create the recipes for what's in the box. And that will teach you how to make whatever you got in your box. That's awesome. It's fire. It's kind of like that Hello Fresh Blue Apron stuff, that's, but local. Yes, but that's, local. That's and free. And free and free. <laughs> So that's exactly what it is. Yeah. So if you're dealing with food insecurity, that doesn't mean that you can't have a creative, nutritious, and fun meal. Absolutely. You know, and it's always a good practice. I feel like uh, Ellie and I used to do this all the time in the apartments we lived at in Dubuque and here in Davenport and even in Waterloo. Um, it was always like we hadn't gone grocery shopping for a while, mm -hmm. but we always like for some reason, like the pantry was full of stuff. Okay. And it was uh, so you did your own chops sort of situation. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. It was like pull out all the things. And then I'm like this tomato <laughs> uh, tomato soup definitely doesn't go with the what a cupcake mix by any but you know what i mean but there's always stuff i feel like in people's pantries that uh that is just sitting there You'd that they don't surprised. know what to do with and if you look up what to make with x y and z why not make a savory cupcake right take the cupcake cut it up and then make croutons or put it tomato soup Chef Keys, I'm just doing saying. Things. Like, I, that's what I was doing. Things. She, she's, she's like, nope, I already got it, Connor. So <laughs> give me another one. I'm Dude. going on chop next week. No, uh, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> I would freeze, baby. I'm standing at camera like, oh my god. What How I does do? this basket open again? Oh, it's in the middle. I was opening. <laughs> I always open a basket from the sides. That's what I do. Oh my god. 
Chef Keys, not only are you an incredible chef, but you are also a content creator, like you mentioned from yes. the start of when we were talking. Uh, you're on social medias, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tell us uh, your handle and what you're doing on there. So my Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok is at I am Chef Keys. Okay. And on my social media handles, I post all the things that I do with this traveling, KWQC, yeah. anything that I'm doing in a community, I post it on Facebook. I also post a lot of um, thought-provoking <laughs> conversations yeah. and topics that people may not agree with or may. Either or, it's a safe yep. space. You know, I'm not going to, you know, admonish you for that, but right. whatever. Um, and TikTok, I do a lot of food videos. Now gotcha. it's just me, so I don't have all the fancy schmancy cameras. Sure. Unlike when I'm working with Village Home Store. Yeah. But I'm in my kitchen. I have my cell phone propped up on something. Right. Kind of like the ring light we got right you here. Know? <laughs> Hopefully my big head hasn't been blocking me this whole time. I'm like moving a microphone now. But gotcha, yeah, I'll TikTok out of the food videos. You know, so I just have my phone propped up, and I'm just going to show you what I'm eating. Yeah. And what I'm doing. Yeah. No, and that's awesome. So, yeah, definitely go follow her Facebook, Instagram, Please. and TikTok at Chef, or at, at I am yeah, Chef I Keys. I am Chef, Chef Keys. Keys. And that's K E Y S. -E -Y -S. See, I, see, I hear Keys and I just think of like, you know, what Key, West, Key West. Oh. oh man, that's what so, I, I love Key Lime Pie and I like a Stone Crab, you know. Let's go. So, real quick, one last thing that I cooked uh, in the last few months over the winter time. Mm -hmm. uh, Ellie and Kaylin and I, we, we went to Florida on our annual trip to Florida. And we stay at my dad and his wife's condo down there, like in the Madeira Beach area. Okay. There's this place, and again, no one's paying me to say this because they ain't paying me to say this at all. <laughs> uh, it's called the Salty Dog. It's a, it's a brewery. The best key lime pie in the world. Salty. It's a little, uh, it's got a kind of cheesecake consistency of it. Okay. So it's kind of like cheese or like key lime cheesecake, mm -hmm. but it's it's just so light and fluffy and so good. Oh. So there's that. So if you're looking for an inspiration uh, for a dessert, especially in summertime, I feel like it's a good yes. warm summertime dessert uh, that's cool. Definitely try that one out. But that's Absolutely. My two cents. 100%. I second that notion. I love it. I love that you're here. Oh, I'm so happy that you're here. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Um, I would stop by any time. Okay. Um, my, I told my boss, Ryan, you were coming in and he goes like, does she want to come back and make like breakfast for us one of these days? Absolutely. I'm like, you know what? Cause Dwyer and Michaels are next door. Okay. Uh, and they, they love food and we all love food around here. Radio people, we love food. Right? We know we can't win any of the free stuff that we give away. Uh, but, so when there's free food in the building, it gets eaten up in about four seconds. So. Uh, well, listen, tell them to at me. And Absolutely. Send me a DM, and then maybe we can arrange something. That's what I'm saying. Chef Keys, Casey Ross, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Give her a round of applause. Oh, uh, thank you. There it is. Thank you, Potter. Congratulations for all the things that you do. We're happy you're here. Uh, we're happy that Queens doesn't get you anymore. We're happy you're here in the top <laughs> City. Uh, shout out to those listening to us in, uh, in Queens right now that... Uh, <laughs> That don't get you anymore. We're happy you're here, baby. <laughs> Thank right. you for having me. Uh, real quick, what's your husband's name? Guys, Alberto. Right? Alberto. And yes. you guys got married? Uh, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Of 2019. Right before the pandemic. Yes. God bless you. Right? I got married in the pandemic and it was it was no fun. Well, but you know what? We went to the courthouse in Brooklyn. Yeah. We both had our Nike tech sweats, like super low key. Yeah. And we had, um, we didn't even know the people. It was a gay couple, two sure. guys next to us. Like, hey, can you be our witnesses? <laughs> sure. And signed the paper and then boom, we were married. Yeah. We went and had lunch and he took me to Sephora. I got some makeup and then we literally went to sleep. That's awesome. None of the adult stuff. We were too like grown. He just asked me, hey, you want to married today and i was just like okay yeah all right i think courthouse is open eight to five monday through friday <laughs> let's do let's it sneak on down there real fast i'm so serious well congratulations on on your marriage congratulations on all the great work that you're doing we're so happy to have you here in the quad cities so uh you. just helping out the community uh yes. and, and everyone yes. that that is that is needing help from food insecurities uh of all ages of all races of all backgrounds of yep. of all everything uh go follow her on all social medias mm -hmm. uh you're gonna be back soon right yeah i am let me know i love it i love i love talking food <laughs> my favorite thing to do <laughs> Uh, Chef Keys, Casey Ross, thank you for joining us in studios today. And uh, you're listening to Quad City's number one in music station, B100. Bye.